G'day, Nick. Hello. I feel like we've had a big build up today and I'm hoping this is funny to me. It might be funny for all the lady listeners. Actually, I actually think there'll be a few guys that find this hilarious after their significant others have been to a, maybe to the beautician. Now I'm really building myself up. The intrigue is growing, Coxie. Okay. I did tell my daughter the other day that I feel like she drew her eyebrows on a little too high. Uh huh. She seemed very surprised. Welcome to the Tradies and Business Podcast with your hosts, Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Divert your phone and grab a brew as Waz and Nick unpack tips, tales, secrets and stuff-ups from guests both inside and outside your trade, helping educate and inspire you to break the cycle of gut-busting and money stress and create a true trade business. <laughs> it's not one of your worst. Thank you. The delivery where, was where pretty good. I'll give you. Barometer? I'll give you. I'll give you a seven out of ten for delivery. Thank that was you. probably one of your best deliveries, Coxie. It almost sounded like you were just sharing a story, and then there was a funny punchline. I'll keep working on it. I'll, I'm going to practice a lot over our break, and I'll I'll come back afresh and ready to go. <laughs> I'm not All sure right. that one was too too enjoyable, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thanks, David. Oh, man. I, I'm not quite sure if that's what I would come out at with at the beginning of the interview. <laughs> I could go really poor for you all together. Yeah, maybe, maybe you can end the interview with another one and we'll see whether it's better. <laughs> oh, improve no, over the, the right. span, yeah. Let me get so, distracted here then. So, hello, David. Welcome to the podcast. G'day, Was. How are you going? <laughs> Good. <laughs> So, listeners, we've got a guest with us, in case you hadn't figured that out. Uh, I'm not um, that talented that I can create two different voices uh, with different audio qualities and everything. But we've got David List on the show today. And uh, David's in a high-vis trademark shirt, mm -hmm. which which must mean you're a legit tradie, mate. you got <laughs> a bit of the tradie haircut going on too, mate. Yeah, I did do. I'm trying to copy my son who got the lightning bolt in the side there. Maybe he was copying me. I'm not sure. <laughs> Does that mean you're a bit of a flash, mate? A bit of a flash. Yeah. A bit of a flash. No. A lightning bolt. A bit of a flog, maybe, not a flash. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the guys like to take the piss out of me at work, so I don't not mind. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's we, a bit of fun. We do live in Australia after all. So, um, David, it's customary for me to be lazy, um, which is actually just code for, you know, I'm a wise businessman. I've worked out how to delegate and outsource. So we make our guests do their own bios, mate. <laughs> we don't read them out. Uh, tell our listeners a bit about who David List is and what the hell you're doing on the show today, mate. So you, you want the, I know you want the long version. I've, I've listened to your podcast. Mm, we, <laughs> we, want, we want the authentic version, actually. We want the interesting version. We don't want the boring, uh, mm. you know, pre-written, copy-written bio that everybody seems to have when they're a speaker and they get on podcasts and it's like, David has done this and he's won these awards and, you know, he's been in the industry for this many years and everybody falls asleep. Exactly. Uh, just tell us about yourself, mate. So I think starting off, might just go right back to the beginning. So come from a, a working class family in, in Melbourne. So my mum's an accountant. My dad is a, a carpenter slash builder. Uh, they divorced when I was about seven. So I actually watched my mum go and do her accounting course after they divorced, hmm. which was really, really cool to watch. I mean, really tough for us, us kids. So I've got two other siblings. And she was basically raising the three of us and going to university. So there's a lot put back, particularly on my, myself and uh, my older sister to sort of do a lot around the house and build a lot of resilience, which in, in hindsight was great. Um, but also a lot of my school holidays were really made up of going with my dad and, and working with him um, mm -hmm. because he used to have a lot of projects, projects on the go. So really exposed to the trades very, very early on in, um, in my sort of uh, adolescence. So then going up through high school, I remember my dad say, I found this really unusual. My dad was like, you really need to finish year 12. And he actually wrote a check when, when checks were a thing. And he wrote a check for $2,000 and he put it on my desk and he said, once you finish year 12, you can have this. And that in, in hindsight, I really don't think that that was the best thing for me because um, I, I knew that I wanted to be and go into being a tradie and mm -hmm. I wish I had started earlier, but 
I just, I pissed away my year 11 and 12. I had a great time, <laughs> but I, I could have used those years, you mm. know, to, to start my apprenticeship. But it, anyway, it, it worked out right in the end anyway. So actually after year 12 and I got the money, um, I said, I might have a bit of a gap year. And uh, my dad goes, oh, that's, that's really good. But um, how about this? In two weeks time, if you don't have a trade, you're going to come work for me and as an apprentice. And he was like balls to the wall, like an absolute, there is no way I would have worked for him. He was an <laughs> unbelievably hard worker. And I said, there's no chance I'm working for you, dad. No way. He said, well, you're <laughs> right. And I said, well, what do you, what do you think? And he goes, I, you're going to be a sparky. It, it wasn't a matter of, you know, any other trade. Mm. And he obviously knew something that I didn't, I don't know. So ended up getting within a week. I had a I had an apprenticeship. I was, there was no chance I was working for him. So I ended up doing about two and a half years in in domestic just for a one man band, uh, which was incredible learning experience coming out of school and then going straight into something like that, where he, again, he was probably a harder worker than my dad. So I drew the short straw there, but I learned a ton. So, but what really interests me, I saw a lot of other people within trade school. Um, doing all sorts of different things. And something that really interests me was industrial. Uh, so I moved throughout my apprenticeship to try and get that type of skill set um, and ended up sort of landing on um, where I am currently now, which was a, a large uh, contractor for a, a large water board in Melbourne, where I am here. Uh, and I've ended up sort of going through that whole corporate sort of construction industry thing. I ended up actually going into management, which was a huge eye opener. Um, and then coming back on the tools, which was the best thing I ever did. Mm -hmm. And so I've, I went through all of that and I kind of got to a point in 2019 where I'd kind of reached what I considered to be the, the peak of my career. I was earning like a, more money than I could have probably imagined. And also I'd gotten some industry awards and things like this. And I'm like, this is great, but really looking, looking at a lot of different people within the industry, particularly a lot of the contractors that I would interact with, I thought the really the, the only way to really get ahead in life is to really have your own business. So I, I thought I could go out and do my own trade business that would be really cool, you know, like, but I didn't really like that one-to-one -one relationship, not with people. It was more the traditional way to grow a trade business is that you need to have employees get more business or, or more work and then grow it that way. I really like the idea of a, a one-to-many relationship. So making products or making videos or something like that, that you can distribute, make it once. Um, so I actually settled on uh, Amazon FBA. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Very popular back in 2018 and 19. So um, turns out that that was a huge failure for myself in the end. Um, a ton of different learnings, learning about like international freight, dealing with international suppliers, what it means to bring things through customs and into Amazon and all sorts of stuff. Amazing. And then the marketing side, which I discovered that I really, really loved. And what was ironic about the doing the making these products was that there was a lot of downtime between development and things like that. So I decided I would make a, a YouTube channel as well. Like I'm, I'm going to make these tech videos and, you know, everyone's going to come and watch them because I'm so good at what I do. Uh, it turns out they were terrible. Um, so <laughs> I was failing all around. And then I tried a ton of different things. I thought, what about print on demand? If your listeners are familiar with something yeah, like yeah. that, you know, and, and uh, I actually got in, I actually made my own NFT platform as well into crypto and things like this. Yeah, which, wow. Yeah. So I've learned so many different things along the way. Um, and it was, and it was like at the end of 2021 where I was kind of like, all right, I just kind of need, nothing's really working. I need a kind of a break. <laughs> um, and I, I think it was, I was working on a job and, and, um, thinking I'm sick and in our industry, sometimes it's very difficult to get a lot of, um, 
apprentices through just the way that the corporate can commercial things are structured. Mm. And I thought I've got so much of this, of what I've learned over my trade career that I would really love to pass on to someone. So I, I made a video on, and I posted it on LinkedIn of all places. And uh, it got a huge, really, really good response. And I thought, this is pretty cool. And I made another one and then I made it another one. And, um, and then thought, well, why don't I start doing this on YouTube as well? You know, teaching people about what I know about electrical stuff. And that kind of snowballed into doing what I currently do now for a side hustle is uh, my YouTube channel. So doing, I do electrical react videos and all sorts of stuff, which is hugely fun. But what I found is over this past year is why it's worked is because I, I have a purpose and I can, I can express that purpose on video. So I think that's, that's where I'm currently at at the moment. So I still have a full-time job in my, in my career as an electrician. Um, but yeah, I'm slowly progressing into that uh, YouTube sort of world, which is exciting. Mm. It's incredibly. Sorry, that is it. Sorry, that was just like a lot of information. No, it was really it's broad. Much better bio uh, than background. we would have done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> might have done three lines. We would have done, David has done this. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what that really? voice is, but anyway. A broad amount of experience, David, to, mm. um, I guess, provide you with the understanding of what your purpose might be. I think that can be yeah. missing for many of us. You know, when we talk to trade business owners, quite frequently the tradies started out with the purpose of wanting to help or I was good with my hands and I enjoy what I do. But finding that bigger purpose I think is extraordinarily important and it takes a journey to figure out what that is. I, you know, we're pretty arrogant and flippant when we're in our 20s maybe even a bit of our 30s if not all of them um it takes a bit of life experience to get to that point where we figure out our purpose and then perhaps how to incorporate that purpose into what we're doing which is the next big step and it's not always easy for some of us um i guess understanding that allows those doors to be open and then for others you've got to go and knock and hold the doors which is what i feel like you've been doing particularly this year now that you've found that purpose do you think that uh, understanding and relating to that purpose yourself is what makes what you're doing more attractive to others? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think also the authenticity and being genuine on video is it's just so important mm. as well for people to so people genuinely can see right through you. And mm -hmm. that is no more clear on than any other platform than YouTube. They are absolutely brutal. So <laughs> If you do not, if you do not bring your authentic self, mm. I think, you know, or if you can continue to sustain the act that you begin with, <laughs> which yeah. is totally never happens, mm. you know, it's, you know, otherwise you just come undone so very quickly. So, mm. you know, I think it's a lesson for anybody that might want to get into YouTube is that go in with it, with yourself. Everybody has something to offer. Yeah. Takes a lot of courage to, uh, be authentic. I think, you know, I was going to actually narrow that right down. And I I feel as though many of us are uh, maybe putting on a front or, or fake, you hear it all the time, fake it till you make it. And that takes away from the authenticity of oneself can take a lot of courage to be authentic. It's not the easiest road to walk along. Yeah. And look, don't get me wrong. In a couple of my videos, my react series that I do, um, you re I really do, you do need to turn it on for the camera. And this is, you know, something that a lot of YouTubers will talk about is that being a little bit more enthusiastic, mm. you know, but a lot of people that I see at work and like this morning, and we actually had like a Christmas breakfast and then we we're talking about, you know, the YouTube channel, everyone gives me shit for it. Mm. And, and they were saying like, you're so well suited to it, you know, like, oh, you're just natural. And I'm like, I've really had to put in a lot of work to get to yeah. where I am today. Like it doesn't just happen overnight. It really is a skill. Like if anybody is familiar with the YouTube culture, you would know who Mr. Beast is. Do you know? <laughs> yeah. So it took him like five or six years to get above a thousand subscribers, you know, and he was this awkward introvert that never liked being on camera, but liked the idea of being a YouTuber. So, you know, he went through that journey and it's just interesting that people will, what you, 
if you're authentic in your own self, people will see it, but sometimes you can't see it yourself, you know? Mm. So yeah, it's just, an, it's really interesting. Mm. David, can you tell our listeners um, a little bit about your channel, I guess, and and what it is that you're doing? Now we're talking about purpose, I suppose, a little bit as well, but, uh, but, but what it is that you're actually doing with your channel? Yeah, so it's basically around um, electrical and, trades in general so a lot of the stuff is what i actually do at work so that has been a really interesting um interesting thing to navigate particularly working for a large corporate organization having someone a dedicated um customer as well that have all sorts of needs around uh, marketing and branding and things like that so Mm. understanding those particular commercial arrangements are really interesting Uh, But also sort of when I'm not doing stuff for work as well, more recently, I've had my recent, most recent video, I had a a sponsored video where um, an organization approached me and said, you know, we'd love to pay for a video to you for you to make one. So that was like, I produced it, scripts, wrote the script, went through the whole, and what was really, really interesting is that I could relate very easily to the commercial side of what they were asking for as well, because of what, what I'd already gone through. Um, so it was kind of really smooth transition. Um, but what I really like to do, I like to have a lot of variety. Like I said, I've got a react videos. I've got a couple of vlogs on there as well, all, all based around the electrical. And so I'm in the water industry, a lot of water industry stuff as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but everything that I do really is based around story. Like I've done a lot of research, uh, into what makes a good story Mm-hmm. Uh, and when I, I do help other organizations now, um, there's a lot of people that approach me and they say, I would love to make a YouTube channel, you know, and I'm, I think I'm ready to do it. Um, and I think it could really help my business. And the first thing I tell them is that you need to get your story in order, understand who it is that you're serving, what is your value proposition, because otherwise you are going to be like me when I started my tech channel. You're going to be sweet. Like I've I've deleted 150 videos because it didn't serve my audience. That's like every morning I would get up. I still do it now. I get up at five every morning and spend two hours on my YouTube channel. And I was doing that with every tech video. I was making a tech video every single morning. And I realized that it wasn't serving the audience that I wanted. So I I got rid of them. I kept a couple because I really liked them. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but you know they're, they're terrible you can go back at the start of my channel but you know i think it's really important to understand that that mm. if the audience don't like it or want it that and the audience that you want to to actually have mm. they're not going to they're not going to engage with it you know yes. and that's an, another interesting thing about youtube as a whole and any social media that you have i hear a lot of people saying you've got a lot of views on this video and the unfortunate thing about that is that it's it's more about the engagement than anything else so it's just, and it's one of those metrics that you really can't measure it's something that you would understand when you're inside of the business you understand how much engagement you're getting youtube have got some amazing analytics to try and help you with something like that but i i think tiktok is a really perfect example where people will say i've got a million views on a video But how much of that is actually converting on how much of that is engaging your audience that you want? You know, I I went viral, but yeah, you were, you went viral with a ton of different, you know, under 16s that, you know, really loved watching cat video because you had a cat in or something, you know, like it's not relevant. (laughs) (laughs) So. Oh dear. I did a reel once. You did a reel once? (laughs) Yeah. It got, it got, uh, I crushed Nicole's figures. Yeah, he I did. think it got like five and a half thousand views or something. And um, I love those vanity pointless. metrics. <laughs> it's pointless yeah. because yeah, exactly. it was me lip syncing terribly to something out of, out of sync to some song. <laughs> I can't even remember what it was about. It was ridiculous. It the was perfect a perfect example. Or something. And yeah. like, so what? So five, the screen says five and a half thousand people watched the video for how long, I don't know. Who they were, I don't know. I guarantee they weren't in our audience because nobody engaged with us off the back of it <laughs> except I beat Nicole in the real challenge because I got more views than she did on her video. <laughs> I might say that was, what, two and a half years ago and he still brings it up at every opportunity. <laughs> yeah, and, and anyone who knows about... Like, wow. 
reels and TikToks and video views, like five and a half thousand, that's nothing, dude. That's I know, like three. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing, isn't it? You know, like it doesn't it doesn't mean a lot unless you're you're getting the right target audience and you're engaging the right amount of people. It's just it's crazy, yeah. I think it, it raises a good point too, just for business in general, um, for, for our listeners. There's, I see a lot of people in business, they have an idea about a product or a service, even if it's in an existing market, and they think, well, people really need this, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out there and sell it to them. And the problem is you need to find out what people want mm. and give them that because they'll buy that. People don't buy what they need, otherwise... I mean, you have a look at the health industry, right? Um, <laughs> junk food makes way more sales than health food because people want what they want. They don't want what they need. And so I think you made a great point about figuring out what your, what your viewers wanted to see, um, not the tech videos that they probably need to see. Yeah. So I think it's, it's something to remember with content creation as well, you know, for all of our listeners out there who are doing videos for social media or thinking about YouTube or already have a YouTube channel is actually trying to put ourselves in the shoes of our clients, of our, of our avatars, as we talk about here at Tradies in Business. And, and what do they want to see? What, what content do they want to get from us? How do you, do you have a process for that, David? Like, how do you go about figuring out what the heck your, your viewers actually want to see of you? I, I do. I've got a bit of a secret. I'm going to sell the farm here. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, well, so so for, first of all, before I work with anybody, I would say to them, I've, I've developed this process called the story list. And it's essentially a way that you can structure your story because I just think that the messaging that you tell to your audience or you tell the world is so much more important than them telling it for you. So don't mm. let them tell it. You tell them what you want. And it's really interesting to me that um, a lot of it's, it's like going around. I see so many of these sparkies around with it, messaging on their thing saying domestic, commercial, industrial. I'm like, Karen down the road knows that you can't deliver on these three things. They're ridiculous. Let's think about what the niche is that you begin with. So the story list is uh, an acronym. So it's L is the legend of your story or your avatar. Who is it? You know, mm -hmm. and don't be afraid to niche down. So that's how I begin with the legend and what is their issue? What is their problem? Don't be afraid to make sure that that issue is fairly specific to what you want to deliver. Um, strategy. What's your strategy for overcoming the issue? And then T, triumph. Like, what does it look like when you deliver your service? What does it look like for them? Then put it in a message. Like put that on your website. Like I put that on my website. And so people completely understand why they're there. Mm. And because you don't want people coming to you. You don't want a ton of different clients that, I don't know, I'm going to do a lot of electrical references. I'm so sorry, but you know. like That's okay. The plumbers will just hate you for it. Yeah. <laughs> I hate like, you anyway, so you'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my... My light is flickering. Do you really want those people? Do you want those clients? Yeah. Like, no. So I go through that. So I did that for myself with my channel and, and what I wanted to do. And then I go through, I cannot take credit for this process, but, and this is like the most amazing, this was incredible when I discovered this. And this can go for every single one of the listeners, listeners here. If you want to make a tiny little TikTok or anything, this is how you engage people at the very beginning of, of your video or whatever content you're making. So um, the, there is a guy called Park Howe. I don't know if you know him. He, he, the business of stories is company. And he, he has this thing called the ABT, which is called the and, but, and therefore. And it really takes a lot of the, um, the main aspects of story in a lot of stories across, you know, history, and it says A is for and is for the agreement. So what you're agreeing to. B is for the, uh, what is it, for the conflict. So but is the conflict. And, and then therefore is the consequence to that as well. So for instance, I had a video the other day where I had a vault stick. And the title of the video was, is this the most dangerous uh, tool or, or measurement tool on the market or something like that. Um, and the 
thumbnail was like, it's a death stick and things like that. So at the very beginning of the video, what I said was, this is a vault stick and it could kill you. So that's the agreement piece, the and, and then the but. So, so why is that there's something that is meant to protect you could lead to your demise? So there's the but portion. And therefore, I'm going to explain to you why that is. So mm -hmm. if you can use the ABT in all of your messages, um, that for me has been a real game changer. It really, really has. And it particularly on something like YouTube, when you're trying to engage people in the first five to 10 seconds of that content, you can really hook them for the rest of that video within mm -hmm. eight minutes. You can keep them there for eight minutes if they know that you're going to deliver on what you've, you've promised. So that is my secret sauce. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm actually not. I'm going to be really secretive and uh, keep all of our magic up our sleeves. What I would like you to do, though, is head on over to tradiesandbusiness.com.au. You can learn all about us, why we do what we do, and how you can work with us, what that actually looks like. There's a whole bunch of free stuff there for you to download, uh, lots of options. We've always got new stuff going up onto the website and a great place for you to learn a whole bunch more about how you can work with us. You can even book a 15-minute chat. For free. For free. That's how abundant we are. So head over to the website, uh, check it out, book a chat with us, and we'd love to find out if you'd be a great fit for the Tradiepreneur community and start hanging out with some of those people that you just heard from. <laughs> I like it. I feel like video content's gotten really challenging. I feel like in the early days it was super easy to engage an audience because it was fresh and it was new and everyone was like, what's going on here? I want to learn more. And it's become so competitive now, can be super challenging to stop the scroll and get them just to engage with that video and hang on. So I love the idea of the ABT. For our listeners, though, when we they have a lot of hesitation about creating um, video content, can be quite challenging to get in front of the the video for some of us. Others like Worry can clearly yourself uh, love it and eat it up for breakfast, even if they do do it out of sync. What I would like to know, though, is it's horses for courses, right? Not all of your avatar are going to hang out on TikTok. In fact, I don't think any of our avatar are on TikTok. They're all on Instagram or they're on um, Facebook or sometimes on neither. And yet there are many on YouTube. So for our listeners, can you explain who is hanging out on YouTube? Because it's one of those resources that is just growing and growing. Yeah, I think YouTube is incredibly underutilized, particularly in Australia. So there's a ton of different, just, I just want to give, I had some stats up here before that I was looking at. I want to give you some stats. So uh, as far as an electrician, (laughs) (laughs) he's got the numbers. As far as users on YouTube are concerned, there are over 2.6 billion users on YouTube. And that's obviously worldwide. Um, The amount of creators so all creators make up um, 113 million, 113 million creators. And then there's only like 10 million above a thousand subscribers. So, oh, wow. wow. Yeah. And then you get down into above. So 100%. I'm up to now subscribers are a vanity metric, but I love vanity. So, um, <laughs> You so are wearing a trademark shirt. You're a sparky after all. I mean, you know. Exactly, right? You're a Ferrari at the front or a Maserati? Which one? No, no, no. no I'm a helicopter. Yeah, the helicopter. Yeah, the helicopter. Yeah. Actually, I'm doing some overtime tonight for the fuel for it as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you go into the over uh, 10,000 subscribers, which is where I'm thinking around 13,000 at the moment, I think it's, uh, so it's 2 million. So that's 1.75%. Mm. of actual users on on the <laughs> who are creators mm. yeah, are actually creators, above yeah. 10,000 subscribers. So I think there is a, a huge market for people to get in and you don't need a lot of subscribers. I got my first sponsored video before I hit 1,000 subscribers. Mm. Hmm. And this is this is what it is about trying to niche down and understand what your target audience is. Mm. So I think the opportunity to actually like, and like you said, Nick, is that there are a lot of people on YouTube that are already your target audience. Mm -hmm. So why not utilize that? And also, I don't think people quite understand uh, the monetary reward for being on YouTube and what it actually means, not only leads in your business, but becoming a partner with YouTube or Google Mm -hmm. and getting paid for that AdSense and then also potentially doing affiliate marketing as well and things like this. Like there's a lot of different ways that you can use a YouTube channel to actually bring in more revenue for your business. Mm. I think we'd be surprised by the ages that attract YouTube. So my husband's parents, they're um, sort of in the 60s and 70s. They watch YouTube like a television station. It still blows my mind because they're not tech savvy at all and they, they don't like social media. And yet YouTube has become a place where 
the hangout for whatever. I don't know what they're watching. I probably don't want to know. And <laughs> I think that's where, you know, social media can be quite limited. Facebook's very different, although it's very hard to get seen on Facebook now. I think things like, um, yes. yeah, yeah, most definitely. And even paid can be challenging now. Mm -hmm. But Instagram and TikTok, there are so many millions and millions of users. Again, it's very hard to be um, found and by your audience. So there, there's definitely an age bracket for those two areas, I feel. Whereas YouTube seems to be quite universal in terms of who may come across your content and what mm. that could then do for you and your business. So, David, can you give us some insights to how a, a regular tradie could use something like YouTube to try and drive interest into their business? Yeah, so I've, I've got a couple of examples who I actually like watching because they're a really good inspiration for myself. So if your listeners want to go on and do a little bit of research themselves, so there's somebody called uh, a channel called Artisan Electrics. They're from the UK uh, and he's an electrician, obviously, but he just started out making videos in his van. Like this is what happened today. You know, he, I think he really did grasp the, the idea of story as well, because he was having these really good engaging stories, like just talking head, which is insane for YouTube, like mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but now has gotten to a point where he's actually got a full-time videographer that goes around with him and does the editing for the day. Wow. So he, his most recent video is putting in a solar installation um, and basically just goes around and says, this is what we're doing. And, you know, this is interesting and things like, you know, mm -hmm. and then they put it together, they edit it together, they put it on YouTube and he's able to pick and choose. This is what's so great about, having so many leads in your business he's clearly able to pick and choose who he wants to work with mm -hmm. he doesn't have to work for all these other little people that might want his business you know so he's a fantastic creator if you want to go have a look uh, with him um, another one that is just crazy you might have seen this stuff on tiktok uh this guy's an aussie um it's called tinder lawnmower man so if you've ever seen any of these like um time-lapse videos on TikTok or YouTube of these guys like, you know, doing their lawn. This guy just goes up and there's a couple of these guys creators out there. They go up and do lawns for free. Yeah. Right. So, you know, and then they film it and it's really cool because really, really engaging content. You know, you want to see what it looks like at the end. It's fantastic viewing. Like I just sit down and watch these things for hours. It's stupid. <laughs> and um, I know, worry about the human race. Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> Crazy. But, this guy's clearly doing it. Like he's getting a monetary incentive for yeah, this yeah. from YouTube, from his AdSense, yeah. you know, but also he's bringing in leads to his business. So if you're a plumber, for instance, what could you do like that? Maybe you wanted to go give a free service away. Clearly you're putting it on YouTube, but what would be engaging? Maybe you want to go in and do a free toilet check or something like that, you know, <laughs> maybe film that. I don't know. <laughs> I guarantee there's people that would want to see the next disgusting episode of, you know, things you find in customers' toilets. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. You'd be amazed at what people There's probably like a channel out there like that already. Yeah, exactly right. Then oh, there is a plumber. He's from the US. Uh, I've got him up here. Uh, his name is Roger Wakefield. Now, this guy's almost got half a million subscribers. Um <laughs> He's got like, yeah, it's crazy. Um, how many views? He's got 61 million video views or something like that. Like he's Holy estimated wally. revenue. Like this is, these guys are absolutely killing it. These are just tradesmen putting what they do. And that's what I advocate for. Convert yeah. your day into content that pays. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was going to ask, David. What are they putting up? They're not putting up, you know, highly produced um shows that you'd find on netflix they're just putting up what they do um for the most for the most these guys i'm referencing have gotten to the point where they can make it you know production value yeah, sure. quite good yep. but i think i was listening to one of your podcasts the other day and it's it's more about you know like just point and shoot and see what happens don't mm -hmm. be afraid about what people are going to say mm -hmm. yeah because this is ultimately can be extremely beneficial to your business. So don't get away in the way of yourself, you know, mm -hmm. jump on there and give it a go. Mm -hmm. so, Nick, so you should just point and shoot and be our YouTube star. 
Look, I'm still trying to get all the messaging right for my <laughs> get the hell out of your own way book, so it'll be a little while yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> uh, so, David, I, I guess, um, you know, not everybody needs to do this in order to make money out of YouTube. Um, I mean, most of our listeners, I think, are potentially going to use this just to get more leads for their business. Um, can you talk a little bit about, and when you were saying before about, um, and I think Nick was mentioning it as well, about YouTube perhaps having a breadth of users mm. that some of the social platforms don't have. For me, I think that's because it's part of Google and it's part of that same architecture. So they're just capturing the search. And who hasn't watched a YouTube video on how to iron your hanky or tie a bow tie or wash your cat without getting scratched to death? You know, like <laughs> none of those. We're going to have to get on board. On top of <laughs> we've we've all done it, right? I, I don't think there'd be a human alive that hasn't watched a YouTube video on how to do something. Yeah. Um, do Do you have any thoughts on that? I mean, why is YouTube a, a platform of choice, perhaps? Um, and and again, you know, we're looking at well, how can our how can our tradey listeners perhaps leverage this for their existing business without getting sixty million views and and monetizing their their content? Yeah, and just to be clear, exactly what you said is you you don't need millions of views to to have this work for you. So, what I tell people, particularly tradies, is to build a deck. So this is mm. D E C. So that is discoverable content educational and community content. And it's just very, very simple and broad subjects. And they don't have to be exclusive. In fact, I made a video that was how to install a um, an exhaust fan. So I actually had like this exhaust fan failed and my wife is like, Dave, you've got the day off. You're not doing YouTube today. You're changing that bloody fan. <laughs> right? So, so how can I do, I wanted to turn it into um, something that was a really, really cool story, but how can you turn something like that into like it's changing an exhaust fan? <laughs> so I said, you know, this, the most, it was something like the most disgusting exhaust change fan changeover ever or something like that, you know? So the story was that I went in there and I changed the exhaust fan. I went to Bunnings, you know, it was transformational because at the beginning I said, I hated doing domestic stuff. And at the end I was kind of like, you know, this is all right. This is not too bad, you know? And I'm not in the same breath. I actually taught people that it was very easy to change over your exhaust fan. So I think if you can try and capture those three different categories, the deck, then it's, it's really particularly the D. So I want to start with the D. So discoverable, uh, because a lot of people ask me, well, what is a discoverable content? And a lot of people might actually think that it might be a how-to because that's how you discover people. When, in actual fact, if you open up YouTube and look on your homepage, all of those will be discoverable videos. And a lot of them will have a lot of a curiosity piece to them. So these are the videos that the algorithm picks up naturally. So the vast majority of what people are watching on YouTube are actually going on there for entertainment value or um, whatever the niche is that, that YouTube is giving you because that's, you know, they obviously know what you love watching. Mm. Um, so these are, and you'll probably, you're subconsciously probably doing it if you're a YouTube, you know, viewer is that you've, you've looked at a video and there's something like, you know, how I was able to uh, destroy this, um, I don't know, washing machine with rocks in it or something like that. You know, it's like, oh, how did you, how did you do that? You know, like, or how I was able to blow up this microwave with 10 CDs or something like that, you know? So if you just look at that type of, how can you apply that in your business, you know, and make it, give a bit of intrigue um, as well. So that's more of a bit discoverable. And then we go down to the educational and that is more of your how to's. So that forms part of your search indexing for Google is what you were referencing before. Um, I think it's an important part of the deck, but I don't think it's probably the most important. So it's, it's really good, particularly if you've got a particular product as well mm. as something that you are selling because then you can say, this is how you do it. Because let's be honest, like if you're a plumber and you go in and you say how to change over a toilet, 
There are 14 billion videos on how to change over a toilet. How are they going to discover you? You know, and are you, are you the best person to deliver that content? So um, just make sure with your educational stuff that it is something that you're, you're delivering value for. Um, and then the community piece is something like maybe a vlog, like today we're walking around and we're going to do this thing. And, you know, like it doesn't necessarily, the community stuff is not necessarily something that is going to get a lot of views. So I do a couple of community content videos and I know that they won't get a lot of views, but they're quite engaging for the audience that you already have. Mm -hmm. So that's what I advocate for to build your deck, build a deck in your favor. So nice. I think lots of business owners uh, misunderstand how their everyday stuff is actually really interesting to those that are consuming it. It's uh, It shows integrity for a business owner when they're able to be transparent about what they do on a day-to-day. So specifically thinking of tradies, we talk, if I speak about your trade, David, um, in a residential zone, I don't know what's behind the wall. I don't know how my electricity goes from one point to another. So being able to see that is really super interesting to me. I find it fascinating to understand even broadly how it all works and what's behind the plasterboard. Um, So I feel like we as trade business owners have far more potential with these videos than we probably think we do because it's stuff we do day in, day out. We think it's boring. Nobody's going to watch me swap out a toilet or clean up after myself. That's the one video I tell everybody to do because people just assume we there's such a negative connotation around tradies still in the media. So being oh, able to show evidence, yes, <laughs> we could all get on that soapbox. But okay. being able to demonstrate that that evidence in video format is immediately connectable to your potential clients so that they can see, okay, this person has integrity. It ticks the box of no like and trust. I know that this guy's going to clean up after himself. I know that he... Um, is going to complete the job with that integrity that I'm looking for. So I don't feel like I'm going to be ripped off. It's super important. I think it's important for everyone. And I, when it comes to the trades, I think it's particularly important for women to be able to see this because we're inviting you into our homes for the most part. So we want to feel safe and secure. That video content is just the shortcut, I think, to getting to that point. It's it's a really valuable asset for any business. You're so right. I, I remember one of the biggest things that I learned out of creating and selling products on Amazon is that the vast majority of people that are buying products are women. So, mm-hmm. and that goes for engaging tradesmen as well. And a lot of them don't feel comfortable doing it. So if you can mm-hmm. get on the front foot and they can already know they're comfortable with who you are without even meeting you, yep. like you're winning. Surely that's yeah. a win, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, we we talk a lot with our tradiepreneur clients about sales process, and um, perhaps you know we could change the language up on that uh, and find a better word than sales because I think a lot of people switch off when they hear that word. Uh, and, but our clients understand that that process is about that know, like, and trust. It's about building that up as part of the the client relationship. The user experience is is what gets talked about by software companies all the time. Um, and imagine if you could drop out a link to one of your YouTube videos. And then the cool thing about that is people then accidentally, in inverted commas listeners, find the other cool stuff on your channel. Mm. And by the time you turn up, they know all about you. They know all the funny things you've done and the the disgusting jobs that you've been to. And like there's a relationship there already. And so I, I think it's it's such a, a cheap way to build that without having to have a team of people in your office making phone calls and sending follow-up emails and all that sort of stuff that just breaks down a lot of those barriers. And it's a, it's an asset that you can leverage over and over and over again, once you've created that content Mm. You you create those pieces of content, you can use them many, many times. I mean, look at our podcast. People like you are still punishing yourselves by listening to it, David. <laughs> uh, it's a great podcast. I love it. <laughs> oh, thanks, mate. Well, look, it wouldn't be fair if I didn't ask you um, my favorite question I've been asking for eight years now. Uh, if you had a thousand tradies in a room with video cameras in their pockets, maybe, uh, what's what's one piece of advice you'd love to leave them with, David? So there's actually a... Um... A fairly well-known uh, YouTube educator that I listen to, Sean Cannell. So, if anybody is interested in YouTube, I would I would highly recommend getting onto his his podcast called Think Media. But he he says, punch fear in the face and press record. And 
love that. <laughs> Honestly, like I, the first, very first video that I thought that I made, I, it was horrible. It was disgusting. Like I look back at it now going, I can't believe that I made that. And, and yet other people were engaged with it. Mm. I was so surprised. Like, and if you, if you can take yourself out of the space that you're in when you're watching videos and say, what is engaging about this? You know, am I criticizing that person on the other side of that? You know, generally not. Generally, mm. for the vast majority of people, they don't care. Mm. You know, yeah. they go flick, flick, and they're done. You know, so I think that fear is just completely unwarranted. You know, it's something that we build up in our heads. So if, if I had to say something, it's punch fear in the face and press record. Yeah. Yeah, that might be my new favourite saying. <laughs> yeah, Always a legend. Yeah, tradiepreneurs, uh, watch out. You're going to be hearing that from Nick. Punch fear in the face and do your cash flow forecast. <laughs> Coming at you. Okay, well, that might it. be me. <laughs> well, uh, all right, David. So your channel, um, where can people find it? They need to go and watch your videos, of course. Yeah, so my channel is at Think List. And I've also got a website. You can go to uh, listmedia.com.au or davidlist.me. You know, I'm all over the thing, LinkedIn and um, TikTok and all the stuff. So, yeah. Nice, mate. Over. I'd be disappointed if you weren't really after all the build up here. Yeah. I'll find you everywhere I'm gone. I think we're in trouble, Dave. I've been thick yeah. list. You'll find me. <laughs> thick list. Love it, mate. Love yeah. it. All right. I've accepted your challenge. Well, I thought I did. And I was going to tell you about yo a joke about yoga, but it was a bit of a stretch. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Boom. I love it. That was Thank so much you. better. Mike yeah, well done. Coxie. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks so much, David. Great chatting. Um, really interesting content, mate. And uh, listeners, definitely go check David out. Uh, have a look at his YouTube channel. Give him some thumbs up and uh, help him get some more views <laughs> and, and transition <laughs> from being a Sparky to a, a YouTube sensation. Thanks Give so much, next Mr. Mr. Beast. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. <laughs> Thanks, David. You've been listening to the Tradies and Business Podcast with Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Find out more about today's guest, tools for your trade business, and other cool stuff at tradiesandbusiness.com.au.